from around the globe, it's theCUBE, with digital coverage of AWS reInvent 2020, sponsored by Intel, AWS, and our community partners. Hello everyone, welcome back to theCUBE's virtual coverage of AWS reInvent 2020. We are theCUBE virtual, because we're not in person. We got a great remote interview, Shlomi Venheim, who's the CEO, co-founder, uh, exciting company, Dre, Jay Frog, we went public this year. Congratulations, CUBE alumni, really a success story of why the cloud exists and all the greatness and goodness of technology. Shlomi, great to see you. Thanks for coming on for this special reInvent segment. Thank you, thank you for having me, John. Great to see you again. So you guys have your mission continues, um, you're growing, we're here at reInvent. What's the story? Give us the quick news vis-a-vis -vis reInvent and AWS. Well, uh, we had uh, a wonderful, uh, wonderful two months uh, since we went public on September 16. Um, the company actually is growing fast and the DevOps industry is going along us, uh, alongside us. So uh, we are very excited about it. Um, great year, great journey. You guys met us uh, two years ago, so, so you know the swamp well, and then we're very excited. Uh, being reinvented again, although virtually this time. You know, when you get a tailwind and you have a trend that's your friend, you guys had certainly had that with the developer first. That's the mantra, everyone's talking about that now. You guys saw it early, the future of binary lifecycle management, DevOps was the lifeblood of DevOps. Now more is happening, you got automation, you got everything as a service, which makes the developer equation even more powerful, abstracting away complexities is even more needed. What's your vision on this? How do you guys continue the momentum in this now highly accelerated COVID and soon to be post COVID environment? Yeah, you know, John, COVID uh, actually accelerated what we already saw years ago. And uh, what we've seen is that the world demands a better way to update software. Look at us, even this interview, is being powered by software, right? I'm, I'm staring at a camera, I used, to, I used to sit in your studio. And everything we do, we order food by, by software. Our kids are at home learning with software. So obviously the demand for more software and more software updates is there. And DevOps is just the vehicle. Now once you understand that, you have to ask yourself, what is the primary asset that we really need to automate in order to become faster and secure and to provide a seamless uh, software release flow. And what we identified 12 years ago is that it's the software packages, the binaries, as, as we were named by the community, the binaries people. Yeah, and, and this is cool because not only, it's just not a tool, it's a platform. You guys are going to have a platform view. Uh, we talked about this in 2017. I remember the conversation, we're like, wow, this is pretty compelling. This is a, a go big or go home. You guys went big for sure and successful. How do you take that platform approach to DevOps where you have to enable success? You got to have the enterprise features. You got now hybrid, multiple environments with the edge and other clouds are happening. How are you looking at this? Yeah, so today it's, it's quite clear in the, um, in the enterprise fall zero, everybody understands developers are the rainmakers. The community is, is, is what powers innovation and what makes changes. Look at Docker, look at Kubernetes, look at cloud native. It didn't start at the enterprise. It starts with the developer, the developer mind. This is, I think, the biggest democracy. And when we realized that 10 years ago, our philosophy was very, very clear. We would like the developers to have the freedom of choice. We want them to have a universal solution that supports all technologies, all software packages. Then we want them to have a hybrid solution. So if they prefer to run in the cloud, or self-hosted, we will be um, completely uh, for it. And then not just in the cloud, but also multi-cloud. So the full, the full freedom of choice coined by the community, the Switzerland of DevOps. And uh, starting, as you mentioned, we started with Artifactory. Artifactory is the database of DevOps, hosting all of your software packages, all type of software packages. Then JFOG X-Ray, our security vulnerability and license compliance tool that natively integrates with Artifactory then JFOG distribution that push your software packages to the edge. We acquired two companies, Cloud Munch for the dashboard that oversee your DevOps pipeline and Shippable, uh, which is today JFOG pipelines, our CI CD. And then we did, uh, you know, it was a long journey, uh, but uh, very uh, fruitful for us. And we are very proud to build it together with the community. 
Well, not only did you guys succeed execution wise, the vision was phenomenal. The execution with the acquisitions, you really knocked down some great accomplishments. Uh, so congratulations, you just laid that out. Thank you. you. Know, good call out there. I do want to ask you about this liquid software narrative. Can you take a minute to unpack that a little bit? Because this is new. This seems to be something that is about the collective vision. How does this come together? Because you got to do act two now. Act one is over. You went public, you did all the work, you built the company, you got a durable business, got great customers, happy community. What's this liquid software thing? Well, think about it. Liquid software might be our vision, the JFOG vision, but it's the world's mission now. We want to have Netflix podcasting to our home without any software update disturbing us. We want to have our iPhone being updated uh, automatically and seamlessly without a reboot. We want our Tesla uh, to be updated without shutting down the motor and schedule an update. And this is our mission. This is the big picture. How can we make sure that software is running smoothly from the developer's fingertips all the way to the edge, no matter what the edge is. Now, in order to achieve that, you have to be fast, you have to be automated, you have to be secure, and you have to be focused on the asset that moves from the developer, the hands off from the developers to the ops that goes all the way to the devices, the machines, or whatever edge, and these are the binaries. So the vision of Liquid Software is a software update flowing uh, into your pipes uh, seamlessly all the way from, from the creator to the consumer. You know, that's the holy grail, that's the nirvana, that's the dream of Edge. You know, if you think about the old days, I'm old enough to remember back in the eighties when we used to build purpose built everything, full stack developer, hardware, ground up, everything, supply chain, hardware, software, done. Now you got an Edge that still needs to be purpose built at the same time, you have a, have to have a software operating model. This to me seems to be a great liquid software moment where I need to have specialism at the device, but I need a root of trust, I need quality, I need to have software operations, but I can't go down, whether it's in space or in the data center. What's your reaction to that? I, I think that, you know, liquid software is already happening. Um, if I would ask you what, what version of, uh, of Facebook are you using, um, I bet you don't know. What, what version of Zoom are we currently using uh, for this interview? We don't know because it's happening behind the scenes. Liquid software is happening. And, and you're right. It was, it, it was a one big pack that we had to take care of everything. And now it's, it's a different way, but still developers are taking care of all the gates, all the stages. Think about all the... Um, all the gates that kind of shifted left, like security, now it's in the hand of the developers. Test automation, developers. Automation in order to be fast and to scale fast, developer. And the ops and the, and the dev kind of uh, come together. This is already a cliche, so I don't need yeah, to, yeah, yeah. again, talk about DevOps. But uh, if you do it right, from the moment you build and secure your software, then you will be faster than your competitors. And organization realize that if you are not fast and secure, you will fall behind and you will lose your competitive advantage. So what we see now is that liquid software already happened and there is much more responsibility and much more expectations from the development organization. Yeah, it's awesome. You want to have the security baked in. By the way, I'm running 10.15.7. <laughs> uh, Matt Catalina, and, and when you run your, you have to go liquid. When you when you go liquid, can you just make sure that it always it lands on an odd number? We know the even numbers are unlucky, so don't give me the you know, <laughs> make it work for me. Keep it liquid. Um, great you stuff. You know one, I'm sorry, dude. One of the biggest <laughs> campaign we ever had was a big sign that says, "Imagine there's no version. Imagine there's no version. Imagine that you don't care what the version is." Because actually the consumer, my mother, she doesn't want to know what, what Zoom version she used when she speak with me. Hey, we got serverless, well, I can go versionless too. I mean, who doesn't want a versionless system? Look, this is critical. I love the hands-on, hands-off mindset. This is about non-disruptive operations. You're starting to get into that kind of liquidity. What's next? What are you guys hearing at reInvent this year? Obviously it's virtual, so there's a lot of different touch points over, the, over these three weeks. We got a lot of CUBE coverage. We're hearing speed. Agility, you know, agility has been, been around for a while. We're hearing speed is critical right now. That's the number one theme we're hearing across environments. That's the number one feature that we're hearing. What are you hearing? 
Yeah, well, John, first, um, you know, I'm, I'm grateful as a, as a CEO to have uh, a team of uh, almost 700 employees worldwide doing this with the community, by the community, and for the community. And we are very, very honored to have um, over 6,000 customers. The majority, the vast majority of the Fortune 100 are already powered by, by JFO, the biggest bank, the biggest retail, the biggest tech company. And what we hear from them, and, and I think that, uh, you know, a vendor that stay humble and listen to the community learns a lot. And the wisdom of the community is telling us the following. Number one, double down on security. Because we're still in the process, in the transition of moving the responsibility to, to the developers. Even the CISO of the organization is still freaking out from, from releases seven times a day. Yeah. The second thing that we hear is that if software packages are the primary asset, then we want to have the freedom of choice. We want to integrate with whatever ecosystem. I want to use Docker and .NET and Java and PyPy and NPM at the same time in the same resource. So consolidate, consolidate this all for me. And the last thing we hear is we, we are all for best of breed, but some, some packages must come together. And this is where the end-to-end -end solution coming from JPROG is vital for the organization. You get the repository, the security, the distribution, and the CI CD from the same vendor. Now take this and push the pedal even more uh, to, the, to the end, and you will see that the deployment environment that also got a bit more complex requires hybrid solution and multi-cloud solution. There is no Fortune 100 company it will just go with one cloud or with one solution. And when you come with an authentic hybrid solution, multi-cloud, that's a real, this is a fanatic freedom of choice and the fanatic democracy that we give to developers. That's a great mission. Freedom of choice, no lock-in. Lock-in's the new, the new lock-in is choice. The new lock-in is performance and scale. Shlomi, thank you for coming on theCUBE. Shlomi Benheim, CEO and co-founder of JFrog. Mad props and congratulations to you and your team in the swamp for great success, having the right product at the right time, developer first, great stuff, congratulations. Thanks for coming Thank on. Thank you very much. And may the frog be with us and may this pandemic move <laughs> fast from our world. Thank That's, you very much. I want to get back to real life. I miss life. Thank you for coming I on. I miss it too. <laughs> this is the Cube Virtual. We are Cube Virtual. Thanks for watching reInvent coverage 2020. I'm John Furrier, your host.